What is going on everyone? Today we are going to be installing a set of LED low beam bulbs on this Jeep Compass courtesy of Oxido LED. In addition to sponsoring this video, Oxido has been gracious enough to give me a discount coupon code to share with you guys for anything on their website and they're going to be giving away a few free products that I'll be talking about at the end of this video so make sure you stick around to the end where I'll explain how you can win some free products from Oxido. I will post Oxido's website link as well as the 15% off coupon code and the product link to the bulbs being used in this video down in the video description, but we'll cover that again at the end of the video. So back to the video here, we're going to show you how to install the bulbs and I'm going to show you a comparison between the Oxido LED and the OEM halogen bulbs. I'll also do a side by side comparison so you can see the true gain that you're getting. Now the steps should be pretty much the exact same as long as you have a Jeep Compass from 2017 to 2021. There was a revamp in 2022 so the steps may be the same after that but it did get a little bit of a facelift so they may have changed a few steps there. The Jeep Compass that we're installing these Oxido LEDs in today is a 2018. There's a couple different headlight options available. These are the ones that we will be installing. I'll go ahead and post the technical specs for those of you that are interested, uh, just kind of over the screen here as we go on with the video, just so it doesn't add any more time. You can just kind of read or pause as we do the install. But as you see, this kit comes with a couple of zip ties, a product manual with your general specifications for the bulbs and installation instructions and then here on the side of the box it shows the different color combinations and bulb types they have available. These specific bulbs happen to have a capacitor or resistor wired in line here but not all bulb models will have that. It depends on the model that you choose. So to get started here I'm just going to open the driver's side door and pop the hood latch down here below the knee bolster. Then we'll come around the front here and release the mechanical hood latch. Raise the hood up and lift the hood prop up into position. There should be a hole on the bottom side of the hood to latch it in place. So there's a couple different ways you can go about attacking this job. As you can see, I have the dust cap removed on the driver's side low beam here, but I have a larger hand and it's kind of a tight area. I don't have enough room to make a 90 degree bend that I need to in order to grab this bulb and get it out of there because there's a metal support brace in the way. And then on the passenger side, there's another black metal support brace you can see here. And to get to the dust cap, not only would that be in the way, but so is the air box. So I only recommend this method if you've got very small hands or if you just want to do the bare minimal work possible. But I'm going to show you a different approach, which is slightly more steps and work, but it's going to make it a lot easier for you, I think. So I actually recommend starting the vehicle, turning the wheels one way or another, and then shutting the vehicle back off and accessing the bulbs from the wheel well. At the front of each wheel well, there'll be four screws that you're going to remove. These are a 5 16 or 8 millimeter socket. You can use either side they'll both work. I'm just going to use my Milwaukee electric quarter inch ratchet here with a little extension and a 5 16 socket. Once you have the screws loose, make sure to remove them. Don't misplace or lose them and you definitely don't want them getting stuck in your tire if you accidentally run them over. So what we're going to do here is grab the little bottom flap and just kind of force it over the little fender flare lip and just keep kind of pulling it up and around. Just kind of keep pulling and working at it until you get up to the first little bend here in the wheel well and you'll see there's kind of a little notch in the splash guard and this is as far as we're going to go. You can use some zip ties or a bungee cord and hook it on something to kind of hold the splash guard back if you find that it's in your way just to kind of help you with installation and removal of the bulbs here. As you see here, this gives you pretty good access. You can see the entire headlight assembly and the fog light assembly. Pretty much any of the bulbs you need to change, you can access from here. We're looking right at the fog light assembly right now and we're moving up. And if we focus here, we can see right next to this little wiring harness, there is the dust cap for the low beam. Sorry, it's kind of hard to get a camera up in here. Here's a shot of the same dust cap from the top side. I'm just reaching up from the bottom where we are accessing it from the wheel well. Rotate the dust cap counterclockwise to remove it. They can be kind of stiff, so you may need a fair amount of strength 
to get it loose and then as you see i'm struggling a little bit to fish it out between that bracket there but you'll just remove the dust cap i should have just pulled it out from the bottom now obviously i'm reaching up into a blind hole here so i'm just feeling but what you do is you'll also rotate the bulb counterclockwise approximately a quarter of a turn and then you'll be able to pull it out of the housing as you see here and then the only thing holding it in is the electrical connector you want to be extremely careful here if the bulbs have been on recently you don't want to touch the glass not only can you burn yourself but you don't want to get your oils from your skin on the bulb because it can burn it out to disconnect the electrical connector you'll firmly hold the bulb with one hand and then using your other hand you have to pull back simultaneously two plastic tabs on the electrical connector you need to hold those pulled out while you're also pulling the connector itself out of the bulb so it may take two hands uh, a screwdriver might help you but one way or another you do need to pull outwards on both of those tabs in order to release them from the corresponding anchors on the bulb otherwise you won't be able to disconnect the connector and you'll end up just ripping the wires out oh yeah <laughs> Now that the bulb is disconnected, you can see the tabs that I'm talking about a little bit better, one on the top, one on the bottom. You just gotta pull them apart and separate them away from the center of the connector. And you can see on each side of the bulb here, one on this side and one on this side, those are the little anchors that we're trying to disconnect the connector from. Again, don't touch the glass. Now, if we check out the factory bulb here, you'll see that there's three little tabs kind of going around the perimeter of the glass bulb itself. If we check out the new Oxido, we can see that it's got a similar setup, three little notches. One of them is slightly larger than the other two, the one on the top. You can see it's more of a true rectangle as where the other ones have a slight angle to them. They're a little bit smaller. Just kind of comparing the factory bulb to the Oxido here. And the Oxido bulbs have a one-to-one -one ratio, which means that the light emitting diode chip mounted to the bulb is the same distance outward from the base of the bulb as the base of the bulb on the factory setup to the incandescent filament. This means that you shouldn't have to aim your headlights and it should maintain a similar beam pattern in your factory headlight housing. Once again, kind of hard to get a camera up here, but as you can see, this is the back of the headlight housing and you'll see there are three visible little cutout notches and the biggest one is off to the left. So the biggest top little tab on the Oxido one, you're gonna want that to face to the left when we install it. So I'm just reaching up here from the fender well, again, not touching the bulb itself, just kind of feeling around, gonna rotate the bulb so that that top more big square notch on the bulb lines up with the bigger uh, cutout, which is off to the left side on the housing. To help out as you're using one hand to install the bulb, you can kind of look through the front of the headlight housing. And as you see here, I was able to get the tabs lined up and then rotated it clockwise approximately a quarter of a turn to get them tabs locked in. Here's more of a close up in case you missed it the first time. I'm just rocking the bulb back and forth clockwise, counterclockwise, just so you can kind of see where I'm focusing on. But right here, it is fully locked in. You will feel the bulb come to a stop again after you turn it approximately a quarter of a turn clockwise. Now that the bulb is installed, we need to reinstall the electrical connector. So you need to pay attention. As you see here on the factory bulb, there's a little bit of a plastic bridge in the middle between the two metal pins. The Oxido connector does not have that bridge, which means you'll probably be able to plug in your factory electrical connector two different ways. Normally that might be a problem with some LEDs because LEDs are naturally polarity sensitive, which means if you hook the power and ground up backwards, they just won't work. But I believe the Oxido bulbs are not polarity sensitive, which means it shouldn't matter which way you plug the connector in, it should work either way. We're just gonna have to make sure to test the light and the fan before we put the dust cap and everything back together. 
as you see, I'm struggling a little bit to get it plugged in one handed, but eventually I get it fully plugged in. You should hear a nice audible click when both of those tabs lock into the anchors on the Oxido end. And then you just kind of tuck the wiring and the little capacitor resistor, the whole thing. You just tuck it all into the headlight housing. You can wait to tuck the wiring and everything into the headlight housing until after you check the light output and the fan, but we're going to do that right now. So I turned the ignition on and then turned the low beam headlights on. And as you can see, the cooling fan is working. You can probably hear it here in just a second. And you can see that the light itself is working as well. So there's no need to flip any electrical connectors around. Since we verified that the light and the cooling fan are working, we can go ahead and reinstall the dust cap. Just like with the bulbs, you'll see that there's three little tabs on the dust cap here, and there's three corresponding notches in the back of the headlight housing. Just like with the bulb, you're gonna line the three tabs up with the three notches, rotate clockwise to turn, and you'll kind of feel it click in. Uh, it's not going to rotate super far. The dust cap only rotates about an eighth of a turn, maybe not even that. So as with the rest of this project so far, I'm going to come up through the wheel liner, just kind of reach up, feel around. You'll see that I, I find that this wiring harness is in my way, so I kind of got to shove that off to the side, work my way around that. And then I rotate the dust cap while I'm pushing towards the front of the Jeep. And then I can feel the three tabs kind of like drop into place into those three little cutouts. Uh, once you feel the dust cap fall into place, you can then rotate it clockwise to finish getting it tight. And again, this will take some strength. Uh, mine at least are on there pretty firm. You also may or may not feel a click when they're fully installed. When I removed them, there was a bit of a click, but uh, going together, they just kind of stopped rotating like the bulb and there wasn't really a click. So if if you've turned it a little bit clockwise and, it, and you can't get it to go anymore, odds are you're bottomed out and it's fully installed. At that point, just kind of grab onto it, give it a little bit of a wiggle and a pull and make sure you can't pull it back off. As you see right there, mine did pull back off. So I had to put it back on, rotate it again and make sure I couldn't pull it off. If you can't pull it off and wiggle it off, uh, you're probably locked in and you're good to go. Now what we're going to do is get the splash guard back in place and reinstall our four screws. Should be able to just kind of push it back up you just need to get it tucked under the little fender flare here. There we go. Make sure all your little screw holes are lined up. See here, I gotta push up just a little bit more and then I can pinch it in and there is our threaded nut for our screw. So you may have to kind of do this number to get everything to line up. Put one in at a time and don't tighten them fully. Just get them all started, then tighten them all down. There we go. All four screws here are started. Another thing I like to do is just kind of line up the screw with the old mark. You can see where it used to be. So you kind of make fine tuning adjustments there. Obviously I wouldn't tighten it like that, but in a more relaxed position, something like that. So we're gonna go ahead and just snug them up. These are just small screws threading into very thin metal. Do not go very tight. Uh, even a quarter inch ratchet, you don't want to crank on it too hard. Basically just feel them bottom out and then a little extra cinch after that. Got a little tight and then it's gonna give it a little more like that. So here we are side by side comparison on the passenger side, your left looking at it is the Oxido LED low beam. And on the driver's side is the factory halogen bulb. I've got the Oxido 3000K yellow LED fog lights on also just for the full effect, but you can kind of see just the color change and the brightness. In this clip here, I've turned the fog lights off. So it's just the factory low beam versus the LED low beam from Oxido. You can get a direct comparison here, shining forward as well as looking at the vehicle itself. You can see the new Oxido is a much brighter, cleaner looking beam. Okay, now everything we just did on this side, we're gonna do on the driver's side now, and it's all the same steps, so I'm not gonna do a detailed instruction or breakdown. I'm just gonna kinda do a quick little highlight fast forward since it's the same thing. If you want, you can fire up the vehicle, turn the wheels opposite direction.
All right, once you're done, make sure you have your tools and old bulbs and everything out from under the hood. You don't want to crunch or crush anything or lose anything going down the road. We're going to lift up on the hood and lower the hood prop. Just click it into a position here and then lower the hood. I usually let it drop from the last couple inches and then give it a little lift to make sure it's firmly latched. And here is our final product with the Oxido LED low beams installed. Here's the lights off in the garage so you can see a little bit better. Again, nice clean look all around now. We'll go outside here and show you what it looks like at night outside after I show you here inside the cab. Nice and bright, nice and clean. So here's the Oxido lights in action. This is just the Oxido low beams on right now, nothing else. Now, you'll notice it looks more like a white output for the light right now for some reason. I don't know if it's just because of the reaction between the white snow and my camera lens and it's adjusting for it, but uh, you'll notice that in the previous clips in the garage, uh, the lights had a little bit more of a bluish hue to them, and that's how they more truly look in person. I'll stop right now the footage and just adjust it, uh, just manipulate the coloring of the video to show you more true to the color in person, what it looks like while driving. Now you'll see I have the 3000K Oxido yellow LED fog lights on as well, and it makes for a nice combination. And I wanna point out, in addition to no errors going on with the bulbs themselves, there's no flickering or anything. It's currently three degrees outside right now, which is pretty cold, and they are performing well in this cold. There's no errors or lights or messages or warnings on the dash, so everything is working well there. So now we're gonna do a little montage of the clips between the OEM stock halogen bulb and the Oxido LED. Then after the montage, we'll dive into the rules, terms, and conditions of entering to win the Oxido products. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that montage there. Now let's go ahead and discuss the details of the giveaway here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna like this video, then you're going to subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and then you're gonna head over to Oxido LED's channel and subscribe to them. All right, so like this video, subscribe to me, subscribe to them. After you've done that, head over to their website, www.oxido.com. Go ahead, put your year, make, model of your vehicle in there and select whatever category product you want. Go ahead and copy and paste the link to that product in the comments in this video. So you need to find the product you want and copy and paste the link as your comment uh, down in this video description. So once you've checked all those boxes, like my video, subscribe to my channel. If you're not already, subscribe to Oxido's channel and then post a comment of whatever product you would like. This video is going live on Valentine's Day at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. The giveaway goes for seven days. So the following Tuesday, February 21st at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, the giveaway will end. You need to subscribe to both channels, like the video, and post your comment by then. At that time, we will select one to two winners 
to get the product of their choice. They did say if I get enough people that we might be able to do a third product giveaway. So it all depends on how many people comment and participate, but it's gonna be at least uh, one or two items given away possibly three. In addition to that, even if you don't win, there's still that 15% off promo code that I have down in the video description. So one last time, just to recap for you all, like this video, subscribe to me if you're not already, subscribe to Oxido LED's channel. I will link their channel down in the video description as well as their website and the 15% off promo code. Once you've gone to their site, found something that works for your vehicle that you want, comment that link down here in this video. We will select random winners a week from when this video is posted, like I mentioned, and get in contact with you to let you know that you've won. Website, product, and coupon links down in the video description, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to Oxido for sponsoring this video. Make sure you hit that like button if it helped you out and subscribe to the channel if you're not already for future content like this. More free how-to videos. Make sure you turn that bell notification on and check out my other videos here. Check me out on all the socials. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day and good luck on the giveaway.